Hello everybody, this is Jeff at Obedia. Came to give you guys a video on the general recording options available in Studio One and generally how we record inside of a DAW. So the first thing I'm gonna start off with is the steps taken in order to record. The first thing you have to do is create a track in which you can find this option in three different places. So the first area you can find this in is by clicking the plus button. So this is your add tracks icon. Right when you add a track, you give it a name, and this will be the name for as many tracks as you make. So if I decide to create one to 42, then that have a track prefix to it. And then I can pack them all together inside of a folder. Track type, we're gonna keep this as audio unless you're specifically creating a folder, but we are going to stick with audio here. If we decide to create a color, we can designate one color for all tracks. And then if you do not decide to do that, there is a checkbox that says auto color in which Studio One will automatically colorize your tracks based on the ascending order of your um, tracks. The next thing is your format. If you're gonna record mono or in stereo, you can create your list of tracks here. If you have FX chains, like how I have FX chains that I have built over the years for mixing, you can apply an FX chain to something. So if you have a chain that you wanna use and you know you're recording all vocals, you may create a vocal chain to use, like I have vocal mix of some of the plugins that I use. You can choose your designated input set by your audio IO setup and then your output, which is more than likely will be main unless you want to create a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your live console or your live board. So this is for all the studio live users who wants a track per uh, channel on their board. You will want to click the ascending on both of these channels. And so what ascending does, is it takes your input and your output routings and numerically organizes them by their input and their output. Therefore, track one will feed input one, track two will feed input two. And if you do the same thing with output, that means track one will feed output one, track two will feed output two, and so forth. So this is for all the studio live users who want to create that one-to-one -one relationship with your board. If you're going to be monitoring your main output, you may not want to hit this checkbox. But if you're going to record eight instruments and you're going to use all eight inputs in your PreSonus interface, then it probably will be a good thing to hit the ascending. Now, if you don't have enough inputs for the amount of tracks you're going to make, then what Studio One will do is reuse your input starting from the first one. So as you see here, I'm using a Yeti microphone. And because it can record in stereo, I have two mono tracks available. So if I decided to create four tracks, the first two tracks are gonna say input left, input right. Track three will then repeat and say input left, and track four would then say input right. And this will occur for all tracks that I make. Because I already have a track, I'm gonna keep on going. And the main way I create tracks is I go to an open space inside of my track list. I right click and I hit add track mono, add track stereo. Okay, what I mean by the empty space is in every session, once you have your list of tracks, there's this gray area below your last track. When you click this, you have some option to fill in those gaps. So I will add a track here for mono, and then I can add a track here for stereo, and that is on a right click. But as you see, if you click on any one of these tracks or in this gray area, you also get your add tracks option. All right, so we're going to record. So in order to record, you have to have your specified input set, okay? And if you see, I have this input area selected, but I will show you how to get there, okay? So if you look to the bottom right corner, there is a mix option here. Okay, this mix option opens up your console. To the very far left, there is inputs. Okay, this inputs window and inputs dialog is gonna show you the levels of all activated inputs and non-activated inputs. As you see, I am using left, right, and stereo as set in my audio IO setup. So if I click IO setup, you see these inputs here and you see that I am using these inputs here. Okay, so whatever input is here is reflected right here. So you see front left, front right, front left and right. And I can look at the levels of all of my channels just by clicking inputs, which will help instead of looking at this skinny meter. But if I'm ready, I can monitor this. 
And as you see, I have the same exact metering going on in this channel. Whichever one I specify here, so this says input left, this says front left. Why the difference? It's because when I go to the IO setup, your input section is always going to reference your actual hardware inputs and outputs. That's what this means. So this means whatever is connected to front left, which would be my first input of my Yeti, that is exactly what I see here. That front left is connected to my input left. So that's why if I look at my input left, this level will always reflect this level. Front right will be this. And so if I change this to front right, and you should see that's a little bit lower in level. If I change this to input R, which goes to front, front right, right, you see it will. it's a little bit lower than the other one. So now we can continue. When you record, you have to arm your track and be ready for record. Any tracks that are not armed to record will not record. So as you see, both of these tracks will record because I have these set to record. If I deselect that track, that will not record. Today's Pro Audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your Pro Audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.